Hello everyone, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fille de la Mer Handmade Soaps. I am located in the Magdalene Islands, Quebec, Canada, and a welcome to my studio. So um, for those of you who know me, welcome back, and to the new viewers, please subscribe if you love to watch soap making or other cosmetics and candles, you're at the right place. So a couple weeks ago, I received some gifts from uh, Love Your Suds. I received some soap shapers. Um, and also I received a, a brand new mold from Winston and Walter to be able to use these soap shapers. Um, and I've been making lots of short clips for TikTok and Instagram and I decided to recycle this content to make a video for YouTube without creating a short and creating something somewhat different in a longer format. So I'm gonna show you my first experiment with the soap shapers, and it's gonna be this one. And so this is a kit that comes with uh, extruder discs. You can see them right beside the skull, which are the teeth and the nose and the little, um, I don't know, forehead bones or empty holes <laughs> from the skull. So I decided to start with that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through how, uh, of how it went and how I used it and, and all that. And I'm going to show you images of the process as I speak to you, recycling the content that I use on the social media. However, if you go to my TikTok or my Instagram, you will find all of these images, but they will be segmented into different short form videos. And here they will all be together in this video. So, um, back in September, before the hurricane, before Fiona hit and flooded my business, um, I received these soap shapers. And of course, the first one that I wanted to try was the skull, uh, because yeah, Halloween, fall, and the Day of the Dead coming up. And um, so July, the owner of Winston and Walter sent me a longer mold with two silicone liners uh, to be able to use the soap shapers that are, by the way, by Love Your Suds. And they, both of them are Canadian businesses. They all ship to the US as well. Um, so I will leave their links below, Love Your Suds and um, Winston and Walter for the mold and the soap shapers. So you can find the links below this video. Um, so yeah, so I got the soap shapers and then I realized I didn't have the proper mold to use them. So July sent me the correct uh, size of mold. So if you have um, the A2 or the B2 molds, uh, you can use them with the soap shapers. So I got two liners, two A2 liners with a, an extra tall and skinny mold. Uh, from Winston and Walter. This is not a set that you can find on her website, but you can buy the whole mold and the long liner. It's just that instead of putting one long liner in mine, she put two small liners in mine. Um, all right, so I will also leave the link to that. Because the soap shaper kit that I used had some uh, extruder, extruder discs, I needed to make some soap dough. Now, I've never made soap dough before. I've never worked with it. I've never purchased soap dough, but I did have this amazing book by B, the Sorcery Soap Creator. So B Liada has a couple books on soap dough and techniques, and I've had this book for a while, and I've been wanting to try and make and use soap dough, and that was my opportunity. So I picked one of the recipes that is in her book, and it worked like a charm. I am using the Soap Dough Recipes Volume 2 Vegetables. Uh, she does have the Volume 1, which includes tallow, I think. Uh, but because all of my soaps are vegetable-based, I decided to buy this version. But I will leave the link to that, and you can find um, the books and get the one that you want. And I actually bought the ebook, printed it out, and then I had it um, combined into a book because I like... I like looking in books and having them on my table sometimes it's more practical okay so I got the molds I got the shapers I made the soap dough we are ready to use the soap shapers and I have to say I was a little stressed it was my first time using a soap shaper and soap dough um, so so I took the soap dough out of the bags and I had made the soap dough a couple weeks ago and I was a little worried that it would would have hardened up 
but to my surprise it was very pliable it was just like play-doh so i i played with it a little bit and then i put it in the extruder and i started you know flipping that thing and it started coming out and i was able to make the tea uh, and they they were cur kind of curling up so when you use the extruder with soap dough you have to be careful and make sure that you align everything so that your your shape is like kind of in a linear linear shape or form anyways um, and then I went ahead and did the nose and the little I don't know what they're called what are they called skull love your sets it just says skull <laughs> Anyway, the sides of the skulls, <laughs> the indentation that we have here. So I did this part. And then for the eyes, it said to use an 18 millimeter um, extruder uh, to just like with no, with no extruder shape. Uh, I just rolled it and until it was 18 millimeters, I eyeballed it and it was easier that way because I, my, my mold was quite long and uh, I couldn't put enough soap dough in that little tiny extruder to make a long, long cylinder. So I just rolled it just like Play-Doh and it was super easy to make. So it took me about half an hour to make all of the little embeds with the, the soap dough, but it was just like so cool. I can't believe like how easy it was to, to use. And I think I'm gonna get back to it because I think, yeah, where is it? I don't know where it is, but uh, I still have a lot of the black and white soap dough. I, I made way too much. Um, so I still have some for other projects, so I may be using it for something else. I don't know. Find me something black and white I can work on. <laughs> okay, so we made the soap dough shapes, the little embeds, and then I made my recipe. And because I was using black and white for this soap, I decided to go with a very rich and vanilla pumpkin, sweet pumpkin fragrance oil. Um, and also for the white, I chose because I had the white portion I went with an apple jack and peel fragrance oil that I had worked before and that I knew was like not crazy uh, behaving in soap so I used two fragrances that I had used before um, I think one of them was like um, uh, pumpkin pie and the other one was yeah apple jack and peel so the black part is is scented in pumpkin and the white is scented in apple jack and peel and both of them together are just like mm, fall right in your face um <laughs> so yeah so i started to make the black part of the soap and i split my batch of soap in two because i didn't want to mix my white in the same time as my black just in case it would thicken up on me and i and then i i you know i didn't want to make a big mess and I did end up making a mess and I had soap all over my table and <laughs> it was kind of fun. Um, it was for sure an experiment. It was very, uh, it was out of my comfort zone. So I started pouring the black soap and you have this little uh, piece of paper that you print and then you stick it on the end of the mold so that you actually see where your embeds need to go, which I found was very useful. So I did that and then I started pouring the black up until the place where the teeth are supposed to go. And then I pulled the soap shaper through it and then I started pushing the teeth, you know, down into the soap and then pass the soap shaper on top of it again, just to make sure that, um, you know, I had the space between the, the teeth and the skull and that everything was well adjusted. And then I mixed my white and then I started pouring the white uh, to make the skull and again you do have to pour in layers because you have to stop and then put the nose in and I flipped the, the the embed part upside down and I filled it with a little bit of white soap before because I was afraid it was going to create an air pocket if I did that so I started filling it with uh, some white soap and then I put it in position right in the middle where right where the nose should be and then I kept pouring some white and then I placed my eyes and then the little side embeds and then I filled almost all the way to the top and then I took the scraper again and where is it? Oh, there it is. Here's the skull shaper. So it has this kind of a, you can't really see, but it has like a round shape for the top of the skull. So then I went ahead and you'll see it. I'm showing you images as I'm talking. Um, so I pulled the top of the skull and then I went back to my black soap and then I, I when the skull was firm enough because I didn't want to break the shape uh, i poured the rest of the black soap on top whoo and then i textured it with the spoon because you know and i wanted to have some texture on there and then i added some crazy glitter and and then yeah i let it set and um i let it set 
<laughs> until the next day. On the next day, I had to unmold and cut the soap and I was super nervous because I had no idea <laughs> how the soap would look like. It was kind of hard to place all, all of these little embeds and put them in the right position. Um, but unmolding was very easy to my surprise, even though this mold is very deep, it's 4.5 inches deep. It came out uh, pretty well. I had a good recipe, which also included a little bit of salt to help uh, the batter harden up and for easier release. And then I used a single wire soap cutter from um, Custom Craft Tools. That was a gift that they gave me a couple years ago and I still use it for s special projects like this one. Uh, what I like about this soap cutter is that you can adjust the, the thickness of the bar that you're gonna cut. So I used that one and I made it a little bit thicker than an inch. I wanted to have it like at 1.1, 1.2 inches wide because when it's gonna dry, it's gonna shrink and I wanted my soap to have a good inch once it is dry. And I have to tell you, these soaps are big and chunky, <laughs> really big soaps. They're about 200 grams each. Yes, that's a very big soap. 200 grams is like huge. Um, so yeah, I just uh, took the single wire and I cut every single soap one at a time. And I think for this specific project, it was really nice to cut them each one by one because each skull is a little different. Like, yeah, some of them had crooked teeth and some of them were losing their teeth. And it was kind of funny. And uh, some of them had missing parts of the skulls here, but just the, the end piece. Uh, all the other ones were fine. They all had their little different personalities. And um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of how I used a soap shaper for the first time. And I, I took pictures and I sent them to July over at Winston and Walter and she's like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, it was my first time. I was so out of my comfort zone. And she's like, wow, you did so good. Can you teach me? And I'm like, well, maybe you can ask Belinda to teach you. Cause like, I, it was so messy and I made a huge mess everywhere, <laughs> but they turned out fine. But I, it took me like a whole afternoon to create nine bar, bars of soap. <laughs> Um, when I usually make like uh, 200 a day or 150 a day or something like that. So it was definitely something I did for myself as a personal project. It was really fun. Um, I'd, like, I'd be curious to know how it would be to take this type of project and make it into a more production-wise um, kind of a way. Like I wonder if I could make a slab of soap with a soap shaper. I don't know if the skull would be possible, but maybe other shapes would be doable. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn more about soap shapers, go to loveyoursuds.com, follow her on social media because she is such a pro and my skull was okay. It was fun. It looks great, but what she makes is like next level. Her soaps are so beautiful. I will add a couple images here so you can take a look for yourself and then feel like you want to go follow her on social media. And as I said, for the soap shapers, uh, you can get them from Love Your Suds or Winston and Walter. You can also get the, the little A2 and uh, B2 molds from uh, Winston and Walter. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me make a mess <laughs> and make a skull, a Halloween skull. Um, these soaps will not be for sale as I only made nine. I'm going to keep them for myself and for gifts in July. I'll, I already told her I would give her two because she wanted to have two of my skull soaps. Um, and of course my kids are going to want some and I have three kids and they each need their own and I'm going to want one. And then I have a friend um, whom I know love, who's going to love it. So yeah, they're pretty much already all um, claimed. Sorry. Uh, but if you want to make yours, you can make one. So that's the good news. And uh, get out of your comfort zone and put on some gloves and goggles and make some soaps with a soap shaper. All right, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care, find all of the links below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, ask questions or comments down below, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.